choose one skill to improve on, what would it be? It's definitely how I interact with people. I'm still extremely introverted and I think I'm really awkward in a lot of social situations. I just want the people around me that I talk to to be really comfortable with me. I want to be more of a people person. I've met a lot of cool people the past year or so in college and it's always a good thing to be good at talking to people. And I've started to enjoy doing that a lot more recently. So I think that's a benefit, but yeah, I think getting better at talking to people for sure. Stunningly beautiful. Like everywhere I look, it's so gorgeous. It's insane. There's a nice little spot where the waterfall is right framed behind the mountain. But there's too much fog and you can't see the top of it. And normally it's like spectacular. And it's also really muddy around here. So I'm just gonna try to head back. Wasn't able to get the best photo, but okay. I found this little cottage that's just at the base of this huge mountain. It's beautiful. I don't know if someone lives there or not, um, but it's a really nice image and like, I don't know. If your younger self saw where you are now, would they be proud? Absolutely. Not only me, but a lot of people need that perspective of even looking back right now, I'm a senior in college, senior me in high school. If he saw where I am right now, like he'll be blown away. Like I wake up at 7 a.m. every morning and go to the gym to work out. Like I didn't think that would be something I would be doing anytime soon. I think I'm still struggling with a lot of stuff, but like that's everyone, like that's life, honestly. I think having that perspective of taking a step back and be like, yeah, like even like 10 year old me, like 13 year old me looking now, like, holy shit, like that's Carrie, that's what he's doing now. Like, even though it feels like sometimes things are a little tough, I've come a long way. Not only I need to have that moment, but I think a lot of people need to just realize that like sometimes progress is in small steps. If you look back years and years and years, you've actually traveled a long way. So I think that's like pretty important. Okay, for anyone who cares, I'm currently standing at the location where they shot Haggard's hut for the prisoner of Azkaban. Normally the mountain in the background doesn't have snow on it, but it's the location, dude. It's so cool, I'm so excited. And I hiked up a little further up the hill. It's, there's still so much more hill to go up. This is pretty much looking down on Hagrid's hut in the Prisoner of Azkaban. The path that I just came up is pretty much the same path that Harry, Ron, and Hermione take every time they go down to visit Hagrid, which is so cool, dude. <laughs> Okay, after a few hours of driving north, uh, I pulled over to the side. There's a cool little castle behind me. Um, and I think it's, the wind has died down, so I'll be able to finally answer another question. If you could go back and relive any moment from your YouTube career, what would it be? One, both of the GOATS tournaments that we did. It was basically like an in-house production that we did. Like we, we made the graphics, we casted it, we produced it, we made the teams, we, like, we did everything. And I think that was so fun to like put on something together for like our community. I think that was so fun. If anyone's wondering if we'll do it again, we probably won't. We're just so busy. I know it sucks. I want to do it again. Also like we don't really play Overwatch, which I'll get to in another question. But the other moment is any time that my work was recognized by my peers. So like, an Overwatch montage that I uploaded that people liked or other Overwatch streamers watched or Valorant streamers watched. Yeah, I think getting recognition not only from like you guys and the fans, but also just like people I look up to, people who work at these esports and these gaming companies and these like content creators who I've, I've admired for so long. And now they're the ones saying that, oh, that was awesome, dude. Like, great job. And like that, like, honestly makes my day. Thoughts on season nine Overwatch? I know you guys said you weren't playing anymore, but I still want to hear opinions. Um, okay, so this is where I'm gonna lump in every single question about Overwatch, the future of the channel, the uploads, etc. It's literally the same as it was a few months ago when I, when I did the Utah video. I haven't thought about, looked at, or played Overwatch in around a year now at this point, which feels awful saying that because I and you know everyone else on the channel loved the game so much, but we kind of just like got bored of it. I don't know, we don't really play it anymore. Nick and I graduate college in like four weeks. Marco and Massimo have graduated college last year and now they're working and finding work and busy with that shit. And Preston's been busy working as well. The time that we can find together to play video games is so, so thin. 
Like, we're just too busy. And so when you only have, like, 10 hours for an entire month to play video games together, you're gonna just wanna play what you wanna play that's fun. And right now, the two main games have just been Valorant and Fortnite. Because Fortnite is just a fun, chill, relaxing battle royale. We can play no build and just have fun. And if we want to, we can play Fortnite Festival and just have a blast as well. We still will upload. Don't get it twisted. We still will upload. It's so weird saying it, but like we're adults now. The only thing we're gonna do related to the channel is just get together every so often and play video games. And if something funny happens, We'll record it and we'll upload it. And I remember reading the comments and a lot of you guys are like, yeah, like, I grew up with the channel. I'm now understanding what you mean by like, you know, I don't have time to play games anymore. I'm in college now or I'm working. And it's like, damn, like when we were kids, we had so much free time and it's like that sad realization. And I get it, it sucks. Like any other question where it's like, oh, are you guys gonna play this game? We're gonna play that game. It's like, maybe, maybe if we like it, if we as a collective friend group decide that we all like to play this game and it's fun to play together, we'll play it. But if we don't, gel or connect with the game within like a few hours it's like yeah we're not gonna waste our time playing a game that we don't like we're only gonna play stuff that we like unfortunately okay after another hour or so of driving the rain picked up again but i saw this cool little like old-fashioned bridge along this river I think it looks cool. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, if I, I'm starting to think the weather's gonna be like this like the entire time while I'm here. Holy shit. The sun's setting. Um, it's not that great for lighting, but I was able to play with the drone and kind of get some cool shots. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how it looks. Has your passion or goals for YouTube changed since you started? Oh yeah, definitely. And I don't intend to be mean, but it's like, we're no longer making videos and playing video games for you guys as much. It's more so just for us, like what we like to play and what we'll upload and how frequent we upload, which won't be a lot, unfortunately. I think definitely the peak of the YouTube channel has passed. For like two years, I got to live every like teenager's dream, you know, of being a YouTuber. Like, that's crazy to me. It's so grateful for the people who still watch, but obviously it's not, it's not what it used to be, you know? I know it's a bad answer, but it's like, I'll just upload what I want to upload. I'll upload stuff that I'm proud of to show you guys. I don't want to try and just upload like a bunch of schlock stuff that like, just to keep the channel alive. Like, I don't want to do that. How do you deal with the discomfort of taking pictures of strangers in public? Uh, I'm still dealing with that. That's why I think I would like to be a really good people person because I don't know how street photographers do it, how they like take pictures of people. Like, do they say introduce themselves first? Or, I, I don't know how they do it. Um, I'm getting better at it, but it is like a fine line of like how to play it. I, yeah, so it's a bad answer, but I genuinely don't know. Okay, there's a guy coming up and I'm gonna stop before I look really creepy just filming in the middle of nowhere. Okay, after a pretty long hike i made it um dude the view of here is so beautiful man oh my god i was able to get the drone out as well get some shots hopefully it turns out well um i kind of just stayed up here for a little bit just to see if there's any changes just to catch any of the changes in the lighting but oh my god it's so beautiful dude I'm at this place called the Quarang, and of course, freakishly beautiful, stunningly beautiful. And there's like sheep down there. It's, like, it's fucking perfect. I've been trying to find a spot to do like the Q&A, but it's like super windy. And also like the, the pathway is so narrow. So like, I can't stand on it without blocking like people and hikers coming through. How did you get to do behind the scenes? Um, okay, I guess I should take this time to explain what exactly it is that I do at film school. <laughs> I'm just working on my fellow students' films. They're short films. Each student film is shot over the course of three days on a weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we work 12 hours each day. So if we start at 8 a.m., we go until 8 p.m. If we start at 9, we go to 9 p.m. That's 12 hours Friday, 12 hours Saturday, 12 hours Sunday. And then, you know, on top of that, we have like normal classes during the week. And so this entire year that I've been at school so far, since September, I've been on a set almost every single weekend, <laughs> both last semester and this semester. So 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> so in terms of what I'm doing on set, uh, I've been the cinematographer for a few student films. And so for all the other sets that I've been on, I've been working G&E. Being a grip, key grip, or gaffer is usually what I like to do. And then on the side, if I have some time in between while I'm working on set, I'll do some behind the scenes photos and take photos of my fellow crewmates and also just friends working on set. Um, it's a lot of work, very busy, but it's a lot of fun. And I do enjoy taking videos of people and people seem to like them. So <laughs> I guess there's that. I made it to this little lighthouse, which is like at the edge of the whole island. It overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. The sunset's a little shit. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to like make do with what I have, but fortunately it's not great. Do you feel you've learned more about photography or cinematography from college or from your own project and self-learning? Both. You're right on both those fronts. Um, I've learned more about photography from my own self-projects and even though I'm not a photo major in school, the classes I've taken are not very good. <laughs> and cinematography is like a whole different ballgame. That on-set environment where you're working with so much, so many lights and so many stands and so much equipment in general, it can be overwhelming at first. And so like you have to slowly work your way up to it. I'm very fortunate that I go to a very good film school. We have a lot of really good equipment so I can learn that stuff hands-on. Like there's a lot of benefits to doing stuff online and learning stuff through YouTube videos. I've done that a lot with photography, but at some point it does come to a thing of like, having hands-on experience is like incredibly valuable. It, there's a ton of stuff that I'm still learning, but cinematography I learned more through school and photography I learned more on my own. <laughs>